Okay. So, Jason, what are you going to be doing next? Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little bit of pressure on Tommy. I don't know how Tommy's going to react now. But I've got my trusty apparatus here. <laughs> I'm, I might get to the side for this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tommy may, may react to this. He may not. But it's just something that I want to test. I want to know how Tommy reacts. Now, some people might say, what on earth has he got a bag on a stick for, this guy? What's his, what's his deal? That is obviously going to scare a horse. Well, the point of this is horses are going to be scared of things that they don't know, that they haven't experienced. That is their nature. If they don't do that, they are dead. They are in deep trouble. So it's very important that I teach Tommy here how to cope with fear. It's one of the key things as a trainer at this level you need to be able to do. And to, to do that, you need to understand that a horse's first reaction is going to be to run, fight, and then probably run a bit more before they think, well, I wonder what happens if I just move in this way like this and actually think. So you have to get through that first. So I want to get Tommy through that if I can. Whether this is going to help at this stage in terms of he might react, he might not, but it's going to happen at some point where I need to deal with that fear. So let's just have a look and just see how Tommy reacts to this. Whoa. As I say, Tommy doesn't like this bag. Whoa. So I didn't know how he was going to react. Now notice me, ladies and gentlemen. What am I doing? Apart from hanging on tight. <laughs> okay. Now the work that I did before with my leading, this is preparation for this moment. Because I've bent him, I've bent his head towards me, and I've... I've turned, changed directions and got him to follow me. I need that before I can do this, because otherwise I'm going to do this. He goes, well, you've got that. I'm out of here. But he has the idea already that I've got to listen to that head collar and do as I'm told. Now, Tommy, you can see, you can see now what I was just talking about. Tommy's run, and he's going. He's still going. And this is the fear. On the other side of this is where I want Tommy to be. And in his dressage tests, this is what will happen. Tom will be really sedate, like he was. He was actually being really good, wasn't he? So why have you upset him? But in a dressage test, Tommy will be going around, and he'll be absolutely fine, and then suddenly something will change, and he's all over the place. He can't control himself. Well, I've just upset Tommy, and... Now what I'm trying to do is get him back to the place where he's, he can be rational. But you see how much running Tommy's got in him. This is why it's a problem. Because it's taken him this long to settle. And I'll do this for as long as it If the whole demo goes like this, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be quite boring. I'm going to get dizzy. Well, we'll have to think of a few jokes to tell us. <laughs> but the, the point is, is I have to get him here. This is stage one. And I can't progress to the next stage unless he starts to understand this. Okay, he's starting to settle down, but I'm noticing he's looking out of the circle. See that? He's not so sure about whether it's me he wants to be near or what. I'm looking for him to stop. He's starting to get a bit more rational now. I'm just keeping, keeping the bag moving and just waiting for him to go, actually, I've just run. I'm knackered. I know he's knackered, but he seems to keep on waving that damn thing. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And I say, fine. So we had a thought then just about doing the wrong thing. I could tell because he slowed down. But he then decided, no, nope, can't cope with that. I've got to keep going. So this, like I say, ladies and gentlemen, this is real. This is, I do... At my yard, I, people that have been to my yard before, I do coffee mornings. I do coffee mornings on a Tuesday, of, first Tuesday of every month. And basically, people come and watch me work with horses. Well, you're getting that sort of privilege now. Well, I hope it's going to be a privilege. We'll see. Okay, he's working. I'm just giving him a little bump on the nose to, just to get him to settle. Well, he's had a poo. That stopped him, but okay, <laughs> that's fine. That will do for now.
I'll give him a little spell. I'm just going to do the other side quickly, or not so quickly as it's probably going to turn out. But you see, Tommy's gone from, oh my goodness, to actually, I'm running. This is not working. There must be another solution. And then suddenly he's starting to drop back down. So let's try the other side. Remember, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So I'll give it a bit of a wave about. Tommy, same reaction. It's like he's never seen it before, isn't it? And that's perfectly normal. I'll let him go, and then I'll stop. And then he has to turn his head. Let him go, and I'll stop. Let him go, and then I'll stop. Just keep his head towards me. What I don't want, unless you want to see a skier, is, is get his head away from me. Okay, so around we go. And remember, what I am trying to do and is, is, get this, is get Tommy back to a rational state, because at the moment, you can see it in his eyes, you can see it in his ears, in his legs. You can see, all he wants to do is run away from this. And that's exactly what he does and exactly why he's so spooky. So I'm starting at a base level on the ground, and then I'm going to work, work up as we go. I'll just hold on one second. My head collar's got a little bit loose. We'll just adjust that. So... Lovely day today, isn't it? It is a nice day, actually, for November. Okay. Keeping calm, waiting Sorry. for the right reaction, for him to get over his fears. And it's his decision. All I'm doing is just facilitating that decision. I'm standing in the middle, doing the same thing over and over, and I need Tommy to start to think. He might think he's being lunged as well, but the, given his first reaction, I'm not so sure, he was a little bit scared. And I'm, I, when I pull his head like this, bump, bump, that, that is my cue for him to come to me. But he's not coming to me. He's deciding, nope, can't cope with that, I'm going to go somewhere else. Nope, go somewhere else. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, I'm knackered. Okay, that's me knackered, not him. <clears throat> okay, so he started, you could see that, did anyone see that change? He went from, he was only trotting, but he went from a quick trot like this to a, oh God, really? And then he stopped. And that is the change that I'm looking for. That rational decision to slow down. There is no need to run away. I know it's your first instinct, but there is a better idea. And me as a trainer, I'm trying to show you that. So I'm going to play with this idea a little bit more. And uh, Charlie, yeah. have you? OK, so we're going, to give, we're going to give him a bit of a break now, are we? Yeah, we can give him a little bit of a break, and then yeah. I'll do a little bit more. Which is always quite important, because if there's one time that we learn, it's when we stop doing something. Uh, and I try to impress this a lot in riders. We have an experience, and very often we just go into the next experience, and we don't really learn from it. Um, and Jason, I know, uses the same principle with, with horses. So I'm just going to fill up a tiny bit of time uh, with you. And I'm interested in this state of being rational. How do we get, if I could get humans rational in the same way that he does, um, I think people would look at me a bit strangely. But I might have found one way in which we can explore this a little bit. Now, for those of you who are here at this morning's demonstration, I am going to go through with this. Okay, for anyone that was here, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, for anyone that isn't, basically what I've done is I've put a post-it note, and you're not allowed to look. I want everyone to put their hands on their, on their laps, and I want you to keep looking at me. Keep looking. I don't want to see anyone moving. And I've put a post-it note under somebody's chair. Now, in a moment, I'll allow you to check underneath your chair to see if the post-it note's underneath there. If it is, I'm going to invite you to come from your comfortable seat, and you're going to come here into the arena, introduce yourself quickly, and then you're going to help Jason. With, uh, with the horse. So before you check underneath your seat, I'm wondering, how are you feeling? What's kind of going through your mind? What are the thoughts that you're having? Hold that as a snapshot, and I'll let you quickly now. I don't want to leave you hanging too long. I'll let you just check underneath your chair. And some person will be. So I want you to stand up. OK, we have someone here. If you just stay there for now. Actually, I might. 
If you just stay there for a second. So we found somebody there, and what I'm going to do in a moment, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, uh, her, if, if you can come down and join us. Um, I just want to go through and explain what just happened a little bit, and why, why am I doing this? Why is this important? How does it relate to what Jason's doing? So we're talking about getting into a rational state. Typically, humans, faced with what you just did, will have three reactions. The first reaction will be, why well, I'm getting out of here, I don't want to be part of this. And so you'll try to run away from the stressor, from the thing that in your environment that is stressing. Now, of course, we can't do this a lot of the time when we're with horses, um, or if we're at a competition, or if we're out hacking, or whatever. We can't just simply run away from the matter as much as we'd like to. The second option, however, is um, to kind of panic a little bit, to get what I call incoherent, which basically means um, notice yourself getting a bit of an adrenaline rush and probably thinking, please don't pit me, please don't pit me, please don't pit me, which may be what a lot of you were thinking. But there is a third option. And I guarantee that a small percentage of the audience would have already been thinking about what they were going to say and do when they came down here. And that was a very goal-focused option. So despite that feeling of, oh, no, I might have to do something I don't want to, recognizing, OK, but if I do, what am I going to do? And these two things are very separate. There are two things at play here. There's the emotional experience, and there is the being able to think rationally. They happen in different parts of the brain. You've got the emotional part of the brain, the oldest part of the brain that sits in the core. It's the most powerful and the quickest part of the brain, which means that faced with an emotional reaction, and you just saw off, off our horse here, Faced with an emotional reaction, that part of the brain kicks in, and it's really powerful. It's so powerful, it can hijack the logical, rational part of the brain that allows us to think clearly and actually say to ourselves, actually, I don't, I don't have to be like this. Jason, just before I go on, I'm just interested, do you, do you notice this emotional reaction in horses? I guess we saw it a lot there. Well, I mean, it, the, the proof is in the pudding. When I introduced the bag, Horses, as you've already said, are 10 times more emotional than humans. They're one of the most emotional animals around. Mm. They can be, and that's what keeps them alive. Well, as soon as I introduce the bag, his fight, his emotional reaction, his irrational response came straight out, and then hopefully we'll get, get him down to a much more rational state. Mm. Excellent. So before we carry on, maybe just what does this mean? How can we get into this coherent rational state despite... Uh, the impact of, of, of something emotive happening in our environment. And I guess working with riders, what I noticed, some of the top riders in the world get incredibly nervous. In fact, some of them are as nervous, if not more, than a lot of other riders I've seen, based on the job that they have to do. However, they're able, the moment they get into the saddle, they're able to think very coherently and straightforward about the game plan. And they've spent years in experience creating game plans that they can stick to. So they are able to think rationally despite feeling nervous. So it's not getting rid of those feelings that, that, that we necessarily want to try and do. That would be impractical. Um, and I guess going back to you, uh, it's important that you recognize this in everyday behavior. So recognizing how to be rational all the time. How do you create a game plan? How do you split down your sessions into easily manageable chunks and focus on what you do want to achieve? so that when something untoward happens, you're kind of prepared for it, you immediately go into goal-focus mode rather than panic and react mode. Now, I know that sounds easier said than done, um, but Jason in the horse is going gonna, is gonna to be continuing to do that and helping him stay rational uh, despite, despite his environments. Oh, now, I've, oh, I nearly forgot. How did I nearly forget? <laughs> What I will do is get the person who's, uh, who stood up at the beginning. Would you be able to come down? Now, I would ask for a round of applause. Please don't do that at the moment. I think that would be uh, information overdrive. And you can either vault over this, or you can come round the side. You will go round the side, OK? <clears throat> OK. What I didn't tell you is that that was a little bit of a setup. Um, who we have coming on here now was expecting to come up. <laughs> I didn't just leave her hanging for five minutes. Uh, this is, in fact, the owner, who, who I've never met. So it's Kim, isn't it? Excellent. I've got a little mic here for you, uh, which hopefully, you just want to test that. One, two, three. Say it a bit louder. One, two, three. 
Is it on, the mic? On? Oh, oh yes. we're there. Success. Okay, so Kim, you're just going to stay with me uh, for a little bit, but it might be nice to get a little bit of background. So we've seen Jason do a little bit of work, um, and I'm wondering uh, a little bit of background about you and, and your horse. Well, I've had Tom since he was five months old. He was destined to be a dressage stallion. Um, he was always feisty. He wanted to beat off all the boys, get raunchy with all the girls, and it really wasn't working. He was a stand-up rearer, and so we booked the op a year ago. And unfortunately, that's when we had our accident. We both ended up in hospital, and he spent the winter with a friend of mine um, until I was able to get him back in February. And when I got him back, he was still very single-minded, but instead of being brave, he was like this, which he wasn't when he was a stallion. Okay. And how's that impacted you as the rider now when you're, when you're working with him? It's, it's like a switch. Um, when we compete, we can go out. He's a 50% horse or a 70% horse. Uh, so basically, we go out, depends on anything, if there's anything scary. If there's something scary, we don't get down the center line. If there's nothing scary, we get down the center line, we get good marks. Okay. And I wonder how often it is you look for things that might be scary in the environment as well and you're noticing things before they happen? When we hack, yes, definitely, because he's a nightmare to hack. He is great with combine harvesters, with lorries, trucks. He is not good with small piles of dirt at the side of the road, so you get thrown in front of lorries and trucks. Okay. So that can be quite scary. Okay. So, Kim, are you happy just to stay down here with me? And I might ask you a few more questions. I might just hand back over to Jason.